Hey guys, welcome back to another video and this one is about thorium molten salt reactors. Now molten thorium salt is one of the best available coolant for pressurized water reactors in nuclear tech mode not only cause it is an amazing flux multiplier with an effective value of 2.5 times but also cause it can produce fuel which is uranium 233 which is what I am using to power these two reactors right here. The process for it is a little bit different so that is what I am gonna go over in this one. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. So there are a total of two types of molten salt reactors available in nuclear tech mode liquid sodium reactors and liquid thorium reactor so sodium can be obtained from sodalite which when goes in a combination furnace will give us sodium and sodium when goes in a liquefactor will give us liquid sodium now liquid sodium is not a flux multiplier like liquid thorium is because sodium is not radioactive but it has excellent thermal efficiency so basically once you make a closed loop by filling a pressurized water reactor with liquid sodium and connecting it to a heat exchanger and you get some fuel rods in hot liquid sodium will continuously circulate out of the reactor into the heat exchanger and will go back into the reactor as liquid sodium so you need nothing else in order to refill or replenish this liquid sodium but that is not the case when it comes to liquid thorium as you will need an additional thorium nugget in order to enrich it so as you can see hot liquid thorium comes out of this reactor it goes in the heat exchanger but it gets converted into depleted thorium salt now this depleted thorium will go in a chemical plant where it will be enriched using two thorium nuggets and this will then get converted into the normal thorium salt which will then go back into the reactor so there is an additional one step of using the chemical plant when it comes to forming a closed loop with liquid thorium reactor and as you can see it is a like a flux multiplier so we are producing way more power than we were when we were using the liquid sodium so this is the setup that i have here and for the thorium nuggets that we will need in order to enrich this salt continuously there is the thorium bedrock ore deposit now this build entirely consists of four chunks and in order to get the thorium bedrock ore out, we need sulfuric acid. So sulfuric acid cannot be produced like on site. So that is why I'm using an infinite barrel. Aside from that, all of the things in this build is like self-sufficient. So we first get a mining drill here with a speed three and power saving three upgrade and the best available bit, which is ferro uranium. To get the output, I place down a crate and this output will then go into our first centrifuge with a speed three upgrade. The centrifuge's output will go in an ore acidizer which will have an effectiveness 3 and overdrive 3 upgrade. So there goes our two upgrades. Its output will then go in a second centrifuge with a speed 3 upgrade. And in order to fill up the ore acidizer with hydrogen peroxide, I am using a chemical plant with heavy bottles. So there's the ore acidizer with hydrogen peroxide. Now from the second centrifuge, we will get separated thorium bedrock ore which then goes in a shredder which will convert it into enriched thorium ore this enriched thorium ore in a second shredder will get converted into thorium powder thorium powder in a furnace will get converted into thorium ingots and thorium ingots in this automatic crafting table will get converted into thorium nuggets these thorium nuggets will then take the express conveyor belt and end up in two chemical plants as we have a total of two reactors in this build so a single chemical plant for a single reactor and in each of these place down the template for thorium salt enrichment and also a speed level 3 upgrade. So that's the entire flow of thorium in this build. Now let's talk a little bit about logistics. So the furnace is the slowest thing in this entire line here. So that is why this conveyor inserter will get backed up at a point. Once this inserter is backed up with thorium powder the comparator will give a signal which will turn off the redstone torch redstone torch will turn off the transmitter and that will turn off the receiver that means that the mining drill will stop receiving power and it will stop mining for more ore until the arc furnace inserter is backed up with thorium powder another backing up will occur at this inserter which goes in the chemical plant as the chemical plant will only accept two thorium nuggets so we will get a comparator output which is in the subtractor mode and this one will turn on the transmitter torch which will allow the furnace to deposit ingots into the automatic crafting table. 
but here is where i'm facing a problem so right now as you can see that the receiver torches and the transmitter torches are working perfectly but sometimes this system will actually bug out which will cause the reactors to explode as you can see here we are no longer receiving any thorium nuggets in these inserters and even though there is no item here the comparator is not stopping or basically it is continuously giving a signal i don't know why this is happening but yes that is a problem with this entire build right here so that's that now with that out of the way let's start making the reactors itself so to make the reactor come out by three blocks and then in the middle place down a neutron source surrounded by four fuel rods so this reactor will have a total of four fuel rods and surround them all with control rods now leaving one block gap from the control rods place down reflectors on the top and on the bottom and we will also place down reflectors on the side in the middle now cover the top and the bottom reflector parts using the pwr pressure vessel and replace these with ports actually even if you don't replace this i am going to change this in the later part of the video but if you have placed ports here then you can keep it like this it is completely fine now place down some reflectors on the outer section like this and with that we have covered all of the fuel rods in reflectors now on the top i am going to place down heat exchangers like this and on the bottom there will be coolant channels so once you place them down like this and now we can start covering all of this up so go to the pressure vessel controller place down one controller and uh, yeah now to cover it all up we will place down the pwr vessels so make sure there are no open components and even if there are then the controller will let you know once you try to assemble this reactor so right clicking the controller will assemble the reactor and as you can see we only have 20 flux because i have only used a single neutron source and the pipes have connected to the excess ports so that was one unit of the reactor now in a similar manner we need to build a second unit and as you can see liquid thorium salt is connected to one line which goes to the chemical plant and depleted not depleted sorry hot liquid thorium salt goes to the boiler so now in a similar fashion as i told you we build the second unit of this reactor and leaving a one block gap even if you don't leave a block gap that's fine i guess but uh, yeah i like to leave a one block gap in the middle and covering it all up and as i told you i'm going to replace ports on these ones so i'm going to shift these excess ports just one block higher and it's better if you place like two extra ports in order to get the fuel in and hot fuel out if you want to do that that is so that's done on both of these reactors and now we can assemble them so that's our two units of reactors done and now fill both of them up with liquid thorium salt don't forget this step so once you have liquid thorium salt in both of them we place down the heat exchanger which will uh, it will take the hot liquid thorium and give us depleted liquid thorium now the boiler here will produce roughly four million millibuckets per second of steam so we need total of two uh, steam the industrial steam turbines for this one and for condensation purposes i am using the normal condenser like not even the auxiliary because i don't really have the space for it so you will need a total of 20 steam condensers in a 5x4 basically whatever pattern you would like to i have placed them in a 5x4 pattern so once all of that is completely done the boiler is full of water we can start our mining drill so there comes our first thorium it goes in the acidizer gets converted and then goes in the centrifuge and from here we start going in the shredder and now the process begins so as you can see nuggets are being deposited in the chemical plant and in the respective inserters so these inserters will work like a buffer actually if you want to solve the bug that i told you about before you can place down mass storage units in between so that they have a massive supply of thorium nuggets at all the time 
Now in order to start the reactor, pull out all of the control rods by 100% and place down the fuel rods, the uranium-233 fuel rods. Now I have a total of 8 fuel rods in them and as you can see the thorium salt is being replenished by these two chemical plants and as I have a single line there is a little bit of uh, mismatch if I had two separate lines for both of these reactors then both of them would be filled up at the same time so yeah that aside as you can see I have eight fuel rods in total and we are producing steam at a rate of roughly roughly 4 million millibuckets per second and that is giving us 7.82 million HG or mega HG per second which is roughly 3.9 mega HG per reactor so we are extracting roughly 1 mega HG per second from each fuel rod so I would say that is pretty good the power consumption on the other hand it is not that much it will never exceed 500,000 HG per second so we are producing way more power than we are consuming also the enrichment process of the thorium salt is giving us a lot of uranium-233 nuggets which can be converted into fuel rods and can be supplied back into these reactors so the only thing that you will need to get from a secondary plant is the sulfuric acid which is kind of a pain because there is no bedrock ore for sulfur as of yet so you will need an oil refinery in order for a continuous production so yeah basically that was the entire process for thorium molten salt reactors now right now these nuggets are being slowly consumed but uh, yeah that bug actually occurs when the inserter is completely empty but still the torch doesn't turn off which is kind of a bummer so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did do press that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this peace out